Raja, uh, the first female group CEO of a public quoted company in Sri Lanka. Um, she's the group, I mean, apart from that, she sits on many boards, which you all of you know. Uh, she serves on the boards of uh, uh, Morrison's PLC, Hema's Consumer Brands, uh, Capital Alliance. Uh, she's a non-executive director. I mean, I mean she heads uh, the Chamber of Pharmaceutical Industry. Um, she's the first woman to head the SLSPC. Uh, the, she's, I mean, uh, she sits on the Ministry of Sports. Um, I mean, I can just continue uh, with everything what she has done, which all of you all know. Uh, but I think the most important thing I like to tell you is that she's a very simple human being. Um, she is very genuine to what she does. So, uh, Kasturi, <laughs> welcome to you. And uh, 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 let me hand over to you to talk a little bit about um, sports, being a sportswoman, a mom, and a CEO. Over to you, Kasturi. Um, thanks, uh, thanks, Rohanta. And um, I think it's a pleasure to be part of this MBA batch. I presume you all are doing a session on, I think the subject might be leadership. Yep. And, uh, yeah. So for all of you all, yes, I've known Rohant, I think from school days, he used to be a athlete, a hurdler, or, and uh, I used to also do some athletics. I think Rohant was far better than me in athletics, but I guess I was more into the team sports part of it. And um yeah, on, on your question on my, uh, as a CEO, what my life in the sports field, uh, being a mom and a CEO, I guess uh, being the CEO comes last, came last of all as a new thing, but um, it would have been being in the order of how my life evo evolved. It's being a sportswoman. And I say that uh, with my hand in my heart is because uh, Academics kind of took a back seat. Uh, not that I did badly at all. I must say that I, I always, because of the competitive side of me, I would make sure I don't, I don't drop into my rankings. But I just, I, I would have focused on the best subject I loved most. That was maths, and I would make sure I get my prize and the highest mark for that. The rest of it was like just passing through. Uh, but I was focused on doing very well in sports and uh, winning with the team together. So that uh, was the biggest part of my life. And weirdly, I, I will tell you the lessons I learned there and the disciplines I learned there kind of carried me in my, uh, when I entered the corporate world and how I grew. Um, because um, see, I did mostly team sports so there are two disciplines. When you are doing an um, individual sport, the discipline you get from any sport is you don't become excellent overnight, right? Um, you kind of, uh, you, you will have to practice hard. You'll have to do the same thing 100 times to become better. You don't become better by just do, doing like, for example, I was a shooter and I wouldn't become better because I just shot one shot every day. I would have had to do 1,000 shots every day. And 999 doesn't work. You have to click that. So that discipline, right? Uh, you understand in life there that um, you can't do anything alone. So your mother has to be on supporting you. Your friends support you. Your Everybody around the ecosystem has to support you to do that. Um, then the second thing is you realize that um, in this journey of a team sport, each of us have a role to play. You are excellent in your role, maybe, but if the other one is not in her, his or her best self, the team won't win. So it's, it's a funny thing how y'all, we, we have to work to become good, but we also have to support the other one to be the best that person can be. Then you get a really well loyal team. And uh, that, that I, I wish corporates could work that way. Um, it's very tough to bring this kind of energy to the corporate world, but that's something I, that's the background we grew up with. Um, and you win, you lose, you come out, you're together. And um, those were the lessons. And I was fearless because look, there is no harm trying something. I think uh, Rohanta is one person who has tried all sorts of sports and I work out even now once in a way. But um, 
there's no the, the fear of um, trying is something uh, not i mean leaving things untried is a thing i think sports teach you to try anything and the worst is you will not succeed so what you get up and do get try it again um so these were lessons which kind of carved my personality and the biggest uh, personal lesson in this thing is we work with people from different walks of life right um when we played when i played for um, sri lanka the basketball pool uh, we had girls from kandy who didn't have places to stay they lived in my home and mind you i my family my it was my mother who did three jobs my father never worked or he did work till i was about 4 years old and sometimes amma would only make rice and one beef or whatever fried rice and something that's all we could afford to put on the table but we opened our homes out and these kids these girls and i are friends for life i mean we sit together we'll take buses and i mean none of us had cars we were all very kind of from low i mean we were from uh, middle income or low middle income uh, families and um, so you learn to appreciate each other for the human being they are you 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 don't uh, carry the status in your life i remember when i toured in uh, uh, for one tour I, my mother used to actually pawn these bangles and give me um, give me a 50 dollars and sometimes when you're doing a two three week tour you end up um, at the last two days i i wouldn't have money right and there would be girls buying food for me and that's how people kind of support each other and the other i mean we still remain friends we would um, i still play netball with them once a week or basketball and that's the the value of friendship and the value of we have we forming friendship for the right reason um so that's that part of my life then i i chose i was one of those who you can clearly see uh, lacked ambition but i i lacked i lacked ambition to on a corporate side but i didn't lack um, competitiveness i would want to do well in whatever i did so i i ended up getting married very early had two kids and i wanted to be the best mother i could be and in my version the best mother in my version at that time was being staying at home and luckily i had a boss who was a bit wiser than me and he said kasuri no you work part time you don't have to give up and um, so i worked at semester and part time and um, eventually um, when i was about 30 i got into full time work and uh, started my career and uh, in my career the biggest difference i think what helped me to go into different roles and come and sit in this position now is two things one is um, the ability or the fact that i didn't i was not fearful to learn new things so i was always put in the deep end and go and learn so learning was always part of it and i'm not talking about academic learning alone i'm talking about just learning a huge new industry not only reading watching observing talking to others um and um, the second aspect is that uh, my leadership style i i was quite comfortable leading the way i knew how to lead i didn't um, benchmark myself with anybody else and uh, i didn't um, change my personality uh, too much but my core unique strength i kept on uh, held on to it and the fact that i could um, rally teams in because of the sports experience and try to get others to succeed because it's not i can't change anything none of us no ceo alone can change anything in fact the higher you climb the lesson i learned in the last 3 4 months is the ceo has the least amount of levers when i was an md i had control of all the business employees and i could give direction here versus a ceo of a conglomerate you have four five ceos to work with five mds to work with and that's the only power you have and how do you you kind of pivot your leadership at that point so that's my transition um, rohanta from uh, from a, from the sports field um, to being my mother and now as and holding this position but in the whole thing i think uh, what's what i could say is i'm still myself uh, like you the rohan i knew from then um, we still love the simple things in life and um, yeah and do I, i think i'll still do things i love rohan they on mute just uh, radu can i have my uh, presentation Yeah. Okay. Kasturi, can you see the presentation? 
I can't. I'm not sure the others can see. I, I'm, I'm not sure I can't see it. <clears throat> Let me just see. I think you have to share it, uh, Rohan. Yeah, we just did it. Let me just see. Rajiv, you have to disable uh, so that I can share a presentation. Okay, here we go. Done. Can see, uh, Kasturi? Yeah, I, can, I can see and I can see my face on it, yes. Okay, so tell us, um, I mean, uh, uh, we, we want to know a little bit about your beginning, like where did you work, you know, uh, how did you select your career? Uh, I mean, everybody says that uh, you need to have a plan in your life, but I can, I mean, see that you did a lot of sports, you know, so, um, I mean, did you really make a choice saying that you wanted to be an accountant? And I mean, how, how did this happen? Did, did somebody influence you or, 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 or was it accident? I mean, how does it go? So um, weirdly, um, I mean, that's a great question. Um, so my beginning, the choices I made, I chose firstly while in school, there were a few choices I made. I chose to do, um, chose to say that I wanted to be an engineer, purely because not that I wanted to be an engineer, I was very good at math and that is the, so during our time, it was either you become, you do commerce in an A-level, you have an art stream, then you have a science stream with the, which you go either in the bio and medical side or you do math style. So because I didn't like zoo and stuff like that, I did uh, double math physics chemistry, which meant uh, engineering was the title you talk about, right? So that's a choice I made to choose the subjects I did. I, I left everything related to accounts. That was the last in my view of preferred subjects and chose by my sports, right? And um, weirdly, my career, it's everything. In some ways, the fact that you're, you know what you like, but you don't know what you don't like. So I didn't know anything about my career. I didn't know what I didn't like in my career. So that part of it was a, just an open green field. I could choose anything I wanted. And I got an offer within a week of leaving school to join this audit firm called Somesaran, which is an art, it was Art Anderson at that, that time. Um, not for my auditing skills, which I didn't even know what a double entry meant, but it was for my sports to play a division netball. And they were the winners at that time. So it was like fantastic to be in a place where I can play basketball for Sri Lanka and a division netball. So my career, my beginning was chosen for me and I, I jumped on it. And the first two, three years, I think I started at the age of 18. So the first two years, I just work so i got my practical knowledge and mind you the person i am i will ask a thousand and one questions because i need to know what i'm doing so i like to do whatever i'm doing i like to do well so the double entry and learned it from a practical sense and i was very good at it i would i was one person who couldn't balance the balance of cash flow remember i was not qualified in any form or shape and touring away every few my every year i would do one tour or something like that and it so happened, uh, universities opened eventually that time, JVP problems. So we were closed for some time and finally they opened and I had to, I got, I got selected for physical science. I missed engineering by about 10, 15 marks, I think. In fact, by that time I had represented Sri Lanka. So I went to the UGC and kind of appeal because when you play for Sri Lanka, you get extra 25 points. Yeah. So if I had got that 25, I would have got into engineering. But then they turned around and told me for medicine and engineering, that doesn't apply. So I had to resign myself and agree that I had I would do um, physical science. And that is also not because I love to do it. It was just because I had agreed with my mother. My mother had a rule, you can do what you love, go and play and whatever, don't take any responsibilities on anything, except get a qualification because if they are, remember she was a, a woman who led the household. She ran the house, she did two, three jobs. 
so she said if there is any issue you should be able to stand on your own feet so that is why um you you need to get a qualification so that was an agreement i had with her so because i needed to fulfill that university was one thing we um and i walked into uni i think two years since i passed out and um i think it was all of about uh, 15 minutes my life in university i walked in and somebody tried to rag me or call me to be ragged or whatever i'm sure he didn't even want to harm me but i i just looked at him looked behind i realized it was only me and i said thank you and i walked home and then i thought oh crap i need to think of something to do or get a qualification because amma was uh, want i um, i needed to do that for amma and at the same time hnb was head hunting the entire netball team from somesuran to come into hnb and play a division because it was always in the kantal finals with somesuran crashing hnb and um, we had some very key players uh, who were there all national players and uh, eventually hnb managed to take all six and even and i was i was one of those people they offered a management trainee or some program with a 10000 rupee salary so i went to tell my boss but he was saying custody no you qualify here you're very good at your job why don't you get qualified and then that's the conversation i had then they decided because i couldn't afford sima they i mean i was i thought chartered was a bit too boring for me so i decided i'll do sima and the company paid for it and that's how i stuck on and on an anecdotal side of it so i stuck on and the rest of the six left and joined hnb and imagine the mercantile finals that uh, season it was in about 3 months and so i was told now custody form a team now how do you form a netball team to take on six of the best who are there half of them were playing for sri lanka and i was left here i thought okay i'll play the game i know so i recruited six basketball players to the netball team on the which of somesuran and those seven of us who were all basketball players we played the match and we won by one point and that was like the kind of icing on the cake for somesuran then so that's how i chose accounting i was very good at it whether i liked it i don't know but i was quite good at it and uh, once that i realized i had a, a knack of on on finance and accounting i chose that as a career so my, that was an entry for me to go did i uh, did i think i was going to end up only in finance maybe i did maybe i did and when i left somesuran the first entry was legitimately from finance i didn't look at general management i looked at as financial controller of aramex and then when i came into somes uh, to hemas also i went as a gm finance into hemas so you can see that naturally i thought i'm good at it i need a job to be able to earn good money and this is what i'm going to do and and luckily for me i i so i chose i didn't choose finance um, accounting but happened by accident but once it happened i made sure that i was good at it so that's where the um, the accounting kind of ended with with themas because um, very soon I, they they had a culture which allowed you to choose different try out different things ask the dumbest questions and i was pushed in to uh, to run a set up a bpo i didn't even know what it meant but at least go and learn and set it up so i guess that was a experience i i realized that you don't need to know all the answers you go learn it and come and implement it with a team who also doesn't know anything we'll all learn together and from there i moved to it and cn process and then i ran businesses so uh, that's where my beginning didn't define my end when i started at a 200 rupee audit clerk did i think at ever dream this honest truth no i didn't and i mean was that my ambition no it was not my ambition either but um, yeah that's how the life goes right i don't think so what i think what worked for me is i didn't hard code my career path to early in life nor did i hard code it even late in life so when i was an md of transportation did i clear think about what's the next role and go into pharma no i didn't at pharma did i think i'm going to sit here uh, two years into the job i did realize i was being put in and I, they were grooming me but did i did i sit and think about it and ponder no till the last day i gave up my job at pharma i ran pharma because i i came from a point i i always look at things there's a lot between the what you call slip of the mouth and from the between the cup and the, the lip so i made sure while i was doing my transitioning and development i would make sure my father the pharma job was my number one priority so kasturi so, that did the, the, does it mean that 
was there some mentor who used to guide you towards jobs or is it that you just looked at the opportunity that come and and i mean I, like i mean that yeah, normally yeah, yeah. Have, you know what i'm saying like yeah, some i do understand say, a very fast question but I, i i think okay my answer to that is uh, one time generally it has been uh, my bosses who have seen it so it has been singularly hussein who has seen potential he's our chairman now and that time hemas was much smaller about 1000 employees and uh, he had, they had visibility to whoever was there kind of and so <clears> the first move from finance director by a, from um, him to us to as a, as um, the setting up shared service was actually they decided it so somebody thought i had the skill i had the um, cap- capability of influencing people and put me there but from there to move to the cpo actually i went and had a chat because not for cpo i only said i'm bored you either give me something else to add on to this otherwise i need to move because i don't like coming to work and not having much to do so that was a conversation i had um beyond that every other change has been done by uh, the group who believe that i could do it and um, so um that's how it went and uh, there has been um always conversation uh, i've always had a coach for the last 10 11 years before every transition who support me to understand what the role is how what kind of um, well i'm not the easiest personality so how do i how do people adjust to me how do i adjust to them um and um, to answer your question actually it has been more um my bosses uh, and the board pushing me than uh, except when i got bored about my job i must say i mean um i yet remember how when i was chairman of lanka satosa and you tendered for logistics and <clears throat> i had a chat with you after you all had gone oh, in one minute there is a message in this thing saying um we cannot see the presentation why is that Oh, uh, Rajiv, can we just see why we can't see the presentation? Ah, uh, this previous one. Okay, okay, fine. Now they can see it, right? Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Right. I'll just check with the uh, presentation. Right. So, uh, <coughs> I yet remember when I was chairman of Lanka Satosa when you won that tender to do the logistics. I came and spoke to you and said, "Kasturi, don't do it. You know, it's 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 absolutely corrupt." And 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 you know why I said it is because I knew the career. I mean, at that time I was on the Hema's um, um, tra- hotels board. Yeah. Uh, and and you know the discussions used to have, and I used to realize a lot of people have a lot of hopes on you. so i can't come and tell you that you know so i i i said so kasturi don't take it but then kasturi said no i'm going to do it you know uh, so that was very daring in nature i mean at that moment you know even when you knew you also know that it was corrupt right but yeah. but what made you say no i'm not looking at my career i have found an opportunity i'm going to do it i mean uh, 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 and you know that there is enough people waiting to Uh, sling mud at you, um, not only from society but even within. But wh- what made you say no? I'm going to do it. So a lot of it, Rohan, there was the <coughs> I think when you were chairman, you brought a vision for Satosa, right? You wanted to take this. I yet remember the first few times we went into Satosa. It was like this: uh, uh, the Natamis would carry those bags, and nothing was automated. It was those pusher things. and how do you make that kind of environment to some sensible logistics kind of a uh, thing look if private sector doesn't support to a uplift this and i knew it was it came with a lot of backlash um, i think you took a lot of backlash eventually once we said yes and um, if we could make sure so at the tip the thing it was a challenge it was like can we uplift and actually give bring light to the vision you had or i think your board had um, you particularly you wanted to grow and i remember certain statistics the sales grew there were operational big issues because you all were growing at a rate because you all were wanting you all had suddenly mobilized and marketed branded cleaned up that and the back end side um, the thing was a challenge is can we bring some kind of um, some kind of upliftment to the kind of systems they had 
it was a huge challenge but we told them look it's not about the money if you can just show and create value that's something we should do um of, of course we don't do it i think last day we didn't we didn't they didn't renew it because i of uh, certain of their own reasons but honestly it was a pride to let go at that point because no more did we see those guys when you ran it you know we had these uh, guys who were carrying stuff it was more automated there was a wms there was the, there was even the planning from from the outlets were coming automated there were com there were customer service units with computers which didn't have the warehouse itself from from that broken thing which rats running around were clean warehouses so it didn't i think we all left it the sense of pride and yeah. i guess nobody will talk about it but that four years has brought sadosu to a different level now they only have to build it from that um the singular thing was i think we believed in your in the vision or what you all wanted to create and if we can take up the challenge and be part of it and it meant i remember that conversation you said kasturi don't take it it's a huge thing you have a huge risk of all failing and i said yes probability of failing is there probability of risk is there make sure we communicate why we are doing it and every step of the way be transparent of what value we are bringing and make sure there is no hanky panky any part of the process so i guess uh, we managed to navigate it so yep. it, yep. it, it was so, one of the do, do you remember this photo <laughs> <laughs> so where 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 are these people now your your friends this must have been when you were like what 19 18 19 this was when i was uh, 17 when i captained um, yeah it was under the under 19 team so i would have been 17 or 8 i was 17 captaining under 19 but because when i was 18 i played a game, played under that other girl who was there so finally i met all of them not all most of them about uh, when i became ceo they had a felicitation uh, from uh, kania to shehara to minoli minoli is overseas so reka is here uh, christine was there they were all they were all here um guy and a few of them are overseas but the ones who were here all of us met yeah So, so this team was like from under 13 we have won always all island and the thing was when i the, when we played under my captaincy we won when we played under the um, the girl girl who stand behind me is christine because i'm born in january i can play two years so we won under her as well so uh, this is your batch now <laughs> am i right Uh, yeah, this is our uh, old days. Yes, yes, it's a mixture of basketball and netball. But can you see there are HFC girls there? There are Sri Lankan players there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so and this uh, is the masters team. So, uh, how do you do all this with COVID? Ah, uh, this we stopped two weeks ago, um, and uh, we're waiting for um, the A levels to finish because only reason we stopped is um, we we don't want to contaminate the because students come there to do A levels. but um, i do exercise um, my individual exercise i do every day in the morning um, covid or no covid but something covid disrupted this for about 4 months i must say rohantan and when we all got back together to play we were all totally not fit it's not like working out when you play a game it's a different um, yeah element of fitness yeah i can see you have really stalked my facebook here but that's yeah. okay <laughs> <laughs> so what made you um... What what did you actually learn at Harvard, uh, um, Kasturi? So for me, I was a person. I didn't even do an MBA, Rohanta. Purely the timing never worked for me. I was um, when they said at the time everybody suggested I should do it. My kids were going to school, so I couldn't. I didn't want to take that time off. um so this was um, and i also had this um, so couple of years about 5 years ago the, um, i wanted to do the um, gmp program but that meant it was 12 weeks at a stretch and i didn't couldn't leave my mom uh for 12 weeks at a stretch so i i opted out uh and why did i why do you think i needed a harvard i i guess i also just i realized even though i grew um in leadership and i grew in the, my career i needed those finer points of how i articulate my thoughts because i came i'm like mostly street smart i have grown i have created businesses through intuition through my way i think strategy how do i put strategy and and business models into a context where i can relate other people can relate to 
So I needed to open my horizons without being uh, too internal driven. And uh, the board was quite keen. I get kind of the best in class um, OPA program. So eventually they had this uh, self program. That means strategy, um, strategic executive leadership program, which is only, it's a condense of GMP, but it didn't have all 12 models. It had eight modules and it was broken over a year. So every three months you go for four weeks yeah. and you come back. And um, so that was it. I, I just loved it. I, I enjoyed Harvard. I must say I, I was fearful because it had 150 case studies to be read. And I'm not a person who loves reading. But I just I think that was one of the best experiences in my life. I'm sure you would. You, you know, you've been in Harvard many times, right? Uh, yeah, because it, uh, can you tell us like, I mean, I know, I mean, when we went to Harvard, you know, you learn so many things, but Actually, when you walk out of the doors of Harvard, you see, remember only one thing. Uh, I, I just want you to know, or I, I, want to, I want you to tell us, is there one thing which you picked up, which you implemented when you came back to Hamas? Just one thing. Uh, yeah, I guess um, one is the strategy and business model of the pharma team. Uh, so the advantage in here is it was, I kept going in four times and I walked yeah. out four times, right? So first module uh, was uh, we had in this uh, when the strategy started, um, it was so pertinent. I was we were struggling with uh, with the price control in in Sri Lanka, and we had just been hammered. Up to now, five years down the line, we still haven't got a pricing mechanism in place. But it opened my eyes to how you can simplify it. So one thing I understood there is all these, all we use this word strategy, but it's a simple way of solving a problem. You should not overcomplicate it. It gives you certain lenses on how to look at it. And it, we, in how Harvard works, is it's with case studies. So we learn, we would have, I would have read down about at least eight case studies where strategy had worked, didn't work, different industries. You kind of, so what I did is whatever I thought we could draw lessons, I sent it to my expo team while I was there. I said, read it, read it. I'll come back and we'll have sessions. So that was one. So we actually looked at our business model because we knew our margins were straining. We looked at our business model because we needed to know how to grow. And, um, and the team actually went through the session with me as I came. So I kind of tried to be this uh, lecturer who just simply asked Dhamma's questions. Why do you say that? Why do you say that? Till you get the, you know, you granularize it to a point that you say, okay, wow, that's where our strategy would lie. And for a simple distribution company, we kind of created that. And today that company had um, grown top line in, in from 2016 to 2020, um, we doubled our top line and doubled our bottom line. Uh, but the unique thing is it created that uh, model, which was what they thought, uh, thought as a model where we are going to be different to competition. And it, it was by endless executing it. But that's a journey which I think we are, the Exco and I both decided, went through this. And it took about, when I finished it, we were starting to launch certain route to market and certain things. But that was it, the first model of strategy, because for me, the word strategy was something I should die thinking, my God, it's something I will never understand. It's such a kind of a very ominous word. But reality, you just break it down. It's what you're do doing, why you're doing it, for whom, what value you're creating. Simplify it and keep asking. So why do you say you're doing this? What, what value? Why do you say it? Why do you say it? I learned this question of ask the Dhammas why so many times till you come to a simple answer. You get people to answer and then you could... Um, you could uh, so that was the that was the biggest learning and weirdly I still have my um, my my uh, four sessions uh, the notes and I still would when I have a problem I go back to because when I overthink I open it mm. and I look at the frameworks because that just says okay zoom out just structure it this way think this way it's so the, so last week did you did you read any article last week or did you do a little bit of research? No, I haven't done, I must be honest, but I would have done about a month back when I was doing the group strategy. And I thought, oh God, why do I start? I thought, do not complicate, open your book, started it at the end. Yeah, it simplified it, it just simplifies stuff. Yeah. Do you take time off to read papers or 
you know, to understand something. I mean, from where do you get, draw your knowledge, which you thought you picked up? Uh, I mean, from Harvard, it was not actually just what you learned, but it's like saying, I need to have some input coming in on a continuous basis. So where do you get that input right now? Uh, because once you go to office, you know, it's always output. You know, you're just giving everything you can. So how, how does yeah. that work with you? So what had happened was maybe the last four years or post Harvard, last three years, um, I consciously would block in my calendar at least two days, two half a days in the evening, which is my time. So nobody can, my PAs won't allow me to put unless it's needed. So the last two weeks because of our planning and COVID times, a bit my, that has been eaten. So those are the times I take some interesting, so I get interesting articles I receive, I put it into my I keep it uh, for me to read later. And uh, I read it. I mean, those are, and I love the stories of other businesses to learn from it, as stories of uh, other CEOs, the mistakes they make. Uh, I guess the lesson is I, have, I, learn, I learn a lot from others. And uh, theory, yes, is important, but theory, how does it relate to practic practice is something I would prefer. Um, the Lego business case, I mean, I even read uh, quarterly updates of um, uh, FMCG healthcare companies globally, regionally, just to understand what the trends are. Yeah, so those are the days I allocate and keep. So, What is the biggest um, mistake that this lady has made? <laughs> Wondering whether that's the picture was the biggest mistake there. So... Uh, <laughs> On a business world, uh, so generally, I think the audience might be thinking, what is the material, materiality would define the mistake. Um, I'll tell two aspects on, a, on, a, on, on business itself. Sorry, my dog is biting my chair here. So <laughs> one first thing is where when I got the license, when I walked in to do as an MD of transportation, I was given a um, 100 million uh, ticket to make mistakes with. So Hussein said, Kasri, we want to take you, to, we want you to take this transportation and make it a different business, grow it. Don't let it be aviation dependent. So at that point, when I took it over, it was 80% was aviation with the GSS, 20% was maritime and, and some courier business and all that. And he said to grow that. So I said, I don't have the entrepreneur speak. I'm giving you, there's a hundred million pocket mistake allowance you're given go try your luck in different things. So then you have this thing and you go and try to try your luck. And one place I was really passionate was logistics, which I had been doing, doing research when I was in the corporate. And that was one investment which I made, we acquired uh, Scanwell Logistics and that's what which grew. And then uh, eventually we got in the GSE in and so that's Spectra now. And then we also thought, okay, maritime, why don't we, at that time Sri Lanka was this, uh, hub where you have crew changes, right? And then uh, all the security crew changes and let's buy some boats with our partners and do it. And I thought I knew what boats looked like and what you'd needed. And that was a big mistake. And that cost the group, I am sure we lost about 30 million there, but the big mistake, so the lesson learned for me is leave technical, get, it's, you need to get different views for technical expertise. Uh, I also went to Turkey and jumped on a boat and I listened with that with the German guy what it was the other partner none of us I think he I thought he was technically okay but none of them knew that those kind of boats don't work in in the waters of um, in Gaul which is the most roughest waters they call it a swell which, which is like it moves quite wide the, 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 um, the whole wave and so that was a good mistake. So don't try, don't venture out into things you don't know unless you have really competent people around you. And um, that was uh, the business side. The second side in business is actually when we, uh, when I took over Pharma, uh, the preceding CEO had, uh, they wanted to go regionally and we went into Myanmar. And I still think it was a good thing we did with the equity we had with all our business partners, we ventured in. And uh, it was doing decently well. I used to go there every quarter and it was setting set up well. And then I decided to do Harvard. And I, I, um, I got another FD, not from Pharma, but some other FD who reported to me uh, and another person to actually go and stay there. Um, 
stay, stay there and make sure that um, uh, it was managed. So the mistake there was, I was asking questions and they were telling me the answers I wanted to hear. So is the distribution going on? It's okay, Kasri, don't worry, it's the itching, it's there. I never, I never dug deeper to say, show me the numbers, show me where it is coming, have you checked this? I took it for granted. I was very happy hearing the answers I wanted to hear because these are senior people. Um, so I finished Harvard. I was seeing the business was struggling. I, I didn't know what was going wrong. I was asking questions. I did, did I was getting the answers, which didn't make sense, but fine. And as I finished, the first thing I did was take off to Myanmar. And when I sat there at the first meeting, I realized it has gone south. The model is not what I planned. It is gone a different way. So first and I had to move out those people who were handling it and post correct change CEO. But the lesson here was, I asked the questions which were right, but the answers of what they were telling me were not really the answers which were actual answers. And I accepted it because it was ideally what I wanted to hear. So I should have actually probed deeper when you're doing, when you're managing businesses which are so many miles apart. Uh, how do you kind of get it right? How do you, it shouldn't be verbal answers. It should be data driven. So that's a lesson I've learned and I've told them now that with lockdown, make sure we have visibility of what's happening and stuff like that. So that was the, those are the business answers question. But I think the biggest mistake on the other side is on a personal front in a corporate is I am a, quite a straight person and I don't play politics anywhere, Rohanda. So not being political savvy within organization was a weakness because I didn't know what was happening. I didn't care what was happening. And um, I was never ambitious to sit on somebody else's seat. So I mind my own business, but sometimes it might be better for you to a bit for, for me, if I was a bit more astute about corporate politics and Hemas has very little compared to the most, but I guess that was um, trusting, trusting things a bit too much was a bit of a, um, I, I would personally see, I would have done it a bit better if I had had the second chance on that, yeah. By the way, I just want to let you know that you have just cost 100 people watching you and it's growing. <laughs> okay. So, um, but tell me, Kasturi, do you sometimes wonder, I mean, because of COVID, you know, and you have two, 3,000 people that you have to give food to every day, you know, uh, does it scare you to know? I know the, the owners are behind you and, and they are guiding you and, you know, you have a mentor and you have a strong leadership team. Uh, I mean, but does it scare you because of the COVID issue? Because you, none of us know, you, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm just coming from a, a business today and, you know, we were doing so good. We were at like 40% growth. Uh, three, uh, five percent above budget. You know, we have planned on new creatives that had to be developed, and you know, we are pushing the agencies to develop advertising. I've recruited and expanded the sales force, and and you know, you, right now, most of the distributors are saying, "Hey guys, I I don't want to carry three weeks stock," and we are saying, "Hey, listen, Monday it's all over. You know, next week don't worry, everything is going to be back to normal." Uh, but but they're saying, you know, it's easy for you to say, but if something happens to my retail outlet, are you going to pay for it? You know, so <laughs> I, I'm just walking in after after that kind of exposure. So so then you suddenly realize, well, well, I mean, what do I do? Because end of the day, I have to pay the salaries end of the month. You know, I have to make sure the sales are coming. So I in your capacity, you have 5,000 people like that, you know, uh, or more. Ha, 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 ha. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, uh, it, it doesn't, <coughs> that's I, I know what you're saying. I don't say I'm scared. I never, I, I'm a person who doesn't back off on things, but it worries me a hell of a lot. Because look, end of the day, we are, it's not like the first round of COVID this time around. We, we need to keep the economic, um, the engines going right as private sector uh, how do you get your workforce to work how do you make sure that whatever protocols you have are safe enough 
and how do you get them to understand not only what we do in office when you go home you have to adapt to it so it, there's no amount education 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 is important but most importantly what happens if now i mean your sales posting is a real problem we've all had that problem and um, how how do you convince your partners also that look be positive let's get this engine going stock up a bit more um monday onwards it, you know we can start this whole order taking we'll push we'll make sure the orders are happening but it's a worry because every incident if you have an incident in one of the organization and you have to move that shift out into quarantine and move in the next shift in it's also a reduction in productivity and production uh, there is a consumer demand uh, drop as well and how do we and last thing you want to do is uh, go down the roads of uh, where we when we have businesses which have some demand we can't go down the road of uh, salary cuts and and uh, and um, laying off people so you need that minimum churn in so the worry is are your employees feel safe that is the paramount thing do they understand what safety means and are people also right there alongside them so and then then the business part of it so that body won't go uh, the only thing we can do is take address all the disable risks and if you say look guys we have to keep moving within this thing what what are the big risk if i say so if i say i we need to keep operating what are the big risk items hospitals is a business which we have to operate due with covid the probability that at least there's one patient who's walking in with covid so all the 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 most people are with the safety equipment so we had somebody who came in about one week ago or two weeks ago in talwata god and and the patient had been a kidney transplant patient from jayawardenapura mm. he walked into the etu or opd and said his transplant had an issue and complication but that doctor said put him to etu and call the doctor immediately but they all suspected covid because he had those symptoms and the patient insisted it was not that but we sent him back to jayawardenapura and then they did the pcr found him positive now the how do you handle we, we had contact traced eight people who came into contact immediately they were put into accommodation we gave and tested them for 10 days we had to test them they were negative thank god but business that's a risk so a patient wherever he roams so we have to mean we have to make sure processes are in place where the employees don't cross so can i can i can i ask you something yeah i mean trump got uh, covid right so my question is there is nothing called saying you can't you cannot get covid yeah you 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 can also get so have you already thought of a second line in case you get covid yeah i guess so we don't um, the md's and i don't like we don't come to work on the same days they are on we are in different floors um and they i mean they manage and um, we will manage without it i mean each one has a second tier hmm. um and uh, we we worry about uh, so i guess none of us no business will collapse if i am not there for two weeks or one month no business will collapse if the md is not there because we have tears but we worry about look can this person what because worry we had is if somebody is tested positive of ours we don't want them into going to quarantine center can we allocate our own quarantine center and uh, so these are the things we want our people to be comfortable um we want to make sure that's a good one kasturi that's a good one because, because see, yeah it's very tough that's the fear not getting the disease but how do you handle this so that's what we've been asking uh and uh, uh yeah and uh, i guess we have to just support their family so we had like case in point we had two employees two of our lab girls who were operating the lab in our maria hospital in migambo and that hospital one of the patients had um, uh, covid but those two girls were quite confident they didn't get it because they said look we wore up safety protocols we made sure that because we give equipment to them we adhered to it so no no chance but they were put in quarantine uh we quarantined them in isolation and kept but then um, so what was their worry so one had a she was a single she was with living with her mother so we had to make sure the mother was looked after the food was there provisions were bought all that 
the other the other lady had a son who was a daughter doing a level so we had to make sure transport was there to take the child for a level so that that support system we can't prevent somebody getting covid we can only protect as much as you can and uh, then make sure that life is kind of as best as possible so what we are trying to do is demarcate at least smaller groups so that we can isolate groups easily and okay. not have business interruption which is which is tough yeah. yeah very very excellent so tell us about how when you were chairman of the women in management ifc i mean you had to identify people who 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 uh, i mean what what did you find out custody there uh, in terms of identifying potentials of women because we have a lot of people out of this 100 plus people who are watching who are all ladies in uh, uh, professional management and and since you have gone up uh, in a very <laughs> funny way you your whole ambition was totally on sports your whole selection of the jobs was on sports you know <laughs> and then of course after you got in there you know your skill set over and your sports and it found its way and even when it came to at very high senior level management uh, once again it was just that you were there at the right time at the right place and you picked up and you moved forward so what would you tell of a person who has not only been at hemas but looking at selecting the best women in the whole country on a world bank project like this i mean what's your well rohan i faced the same challenges you faced when you were chairman i think you were chairman for about 9 years i was only chairman one year i guess uh but the thing is it was never an easy job we had um, <laughs> so many talented women and uh, then some most some of them don't even apply and how we i guess the fact that having a nice good budging pattern alongside you was helpful that uh, and the diversity of opinion was something i guess i learned everybody had a view and weirdly we come to a consensus but how we push back and we want and if we didn't get somebody i guess we were not willing to just settle for second best so um that thing oh, i mean i guess we had so many stories which i learned i took out i think we all took out more as judges from that event than we give in give them there because we got exposed to so many stories which otherwise we won't be exposed to and um, all of us take an effort to go and find stories and uh, i guess uh, sometimes we have had an easier life than many and it kind of humbles you to think how they've done well but uh, so the my experience there was it's a tough process um but when you have judges who are also uh, very unbiased and who are willing to give uh, um their feedback the way they see it and accept diversity diversity in terms of opinion and not get annoyed with each other i think it makes sense so one thing what's your, have, what's your message to the youngsters kasturi having um, having come up there you have won the awards i mean you won i think best so my have. message to them is you don't have to be a director or ceo to win an award i guess you are just highlighted i, I remember <laughs> there were so many awards where people have just made a difference and the story itself we give an award so enjoy what you're doing have an impact in whatever area you are operating in impact others and make the others would be the best brand ambassadors for you so you see this photo yeah i did see this photo that is my school. this uh, is what yeah what, yeah what so what the, were you there i was a school games captain so the mm -hmm. principal and the other ladies this was the school um, that is sriyan sister sriyan vijayaratna sister she yeah. samantha she was the head girl so uh, and i used to give a speech i wanted to give my uh, my badge up because at the sports meet i had to give a speech and sam would sit <laughs> and train me every day after school class it's not a big deal you just have to speak so <laughs> so yeah, are you in touch with these people kasturi yes i am and some of my those people are my closest friends now i mean they are all all over the world i must be honest they are all over the world but um, my closest friends are my school friends you never dreamt when you were sitting there that you'll be a M the first md and you'll be uh, uh you your your picture will be in the parliament of sri lanka 
and pictures splashed everywhere excessively. But <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't read. By the way, by the way, you didn't go to Parliament the day you were invited for that opening. Am I, I right? I didn't because, because you. I to tell my I had a board meeting and I was very shy to tell my board that they are getting an award at the parliament and my picture is being unveiled there and I thought they those and it is not my it was the holdings board right and we had global people coming from India from Tata Group and all and I thought no they think this girl is really off so I didn't even breathe a word when they saw this he said what when was it I said it was on the day of the board meeting and I was shy to tell you all this. So that is, the, ladies and gentlemen, that is Kasturi, who, who is so passionate to what he does, what she does, that the, when the parliament and the president of the country calls you, she says, no, I, it's my job that I have to do. And, and, and that's the beauty of this person. So who are these people? So, you know, I studied in the Tamil medium, even though half the time I was, um, and how I have lots of Sinhalese friends is when I went to do math, uh, I didn't have, I was the only student of, of from seven, another friend of mine joined from St. Clair's and we didn't have a Tamil teacher to teach us maths, right? So the Sinhalese teacher would teach us maths in English. So I used to go and hang out with them and well. So this is my Tamil class. Um, so they have, most of them did commerce and science. And uh, sadly after 83 riots, most of them got affected and went to either Australia and Canada, but uh, you wouldn't believe whenever I go to Aussie and if I go to the US, they have a reunion and we just meet up. So every single one of them is in touch with me. And I mean, that's a, that's a, the beauty of these friendships you have. So you, so you studied in Tamil medium, but then you went on to, okay. So you did your A-levels also science? In, 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 yeah, in, Tamil, in Tamil, but you know what? So I learned it in English. So learning a problem in English and and answering it and versus when you sit for A-level, you have to read that whole question in Tamil. So I used to go six months before the A-level, I went to a teacher from Hindu college who taught me to read the question in Tamil and think in Tamil. It's a it's a different process, how you think in Tamil. So, so in office, do you talk in Tamil to the Tamil people or how does it yeah. go? <laughs> I broke Tamil. I, I have so at home. I have domestics who speak in Tamil, but with my broken Tamil, I'll manage. I can I can see Shivani Lu is there. <laughs> yeah, Shivani is there. Yeah. So this is your elite friends of yours. You know the very elite <laughs> friends. What is friends? <laughs> yeah, they are, they I think own about half of Sri Lanka, half of Colombo. So tell me, how how does it? How do you balance your friends and um, now running corporate? I mean, how, how do you balance this, uh, Kasturi? Because you have to do your sports. You have to spend time with the people in office and, and you have to keep up. You have to study to keep up with, with what's happening in the world, you know? So you allocate time. So so what, what do they tell about you now? <laughs> so my uh, so for me, the thing is, if, you, if you're passionate about something, you'll make time for it. And my friends, uh, my closest friends are a small group who have been with me for the last 20 to 40 years. And um, we somehow, I mean, we would connect at least once a week on phone, but otherwise we would connect once a month. Um, and it's not that you have to meet all the time, but you know, you're there, they're there for you if you need, and I'm there for them if they need. Uh, so they will pick up a call, the call, a, a phone if you really need help. Um, I know, I mean, when I worked and if I had to travel, um, and my mom has uh, dementia, so I always needed a stand standby person. It was my friends. I would just tell them, leave the nurse a number of my friends, and I tell them, just call for emergency, and that's what happens. Mm -hmm. So my closest friends might be about eight people, and um, they've been my biggest supporters. They don't judge me. They accept me for who I am. And they, and the same way, I don't, and I mean, that's, I think, you know, I mean, when you're, you've known each other for so long, uh, so they're kind of my shield. They kind of protect me anyway. Are they so, jealous of you? Honestly, not, not my friends, not my closest friends, but you know, there will be people who are, um, humanity is that, right? Um, uh, very, there'll be people who really would appreciate it. I, I mean, I learned it from, uh, uh, this announcement itself. Um, so my closest friends are really, I mean, they were celebrating way before and uh, 
um, they would have they pray for me they have masses for me so their celebration is one will have a service for me one will have some other blessing uh, get a priest so they are all worried that you know they want me protected so that's how they show their love for me but when this announcement came i had three different kind of uh, feedback the younger generation who were like sub 30 or sub 35 who actually were inspired and they wanted career so they their thought was kasturi uh, thank you for showing us and i didn't look at it this way to be honest one time i never looked at it this way thank you for um, giving us hope and knowing that giving us a path to succeed so which actually while i was hum it also made gave a lot of responsibility on me because i thought wow what if i don't do well that means these kids don't have a chance or they'll be given these kids be, be growing up in this whole um, theory of a woman has failed in this job right so i have to make sure i succeed because the future generation has to have that avenue that a woman has succeeded so they have a chance they have a license to go and chant own that space if i haven't if i don't they won't have that license they actually will be at a disadvantage that's one lot then you have the ones in their 40s or whatever who are uh, the, the competitive ones which say yeah it's not a big wow that's fine and um, then of course i must say rohan there are the men who are kind of worried wondering what's happening there why didn't anybody make a issue when they were did something so i'm saying like i'm sorry that that's that's how the cookie crumbles so yeah so, so now this this uh, this lady who is the second from the right couldn't find money to go for basketball practice from velavatta to sugardas stadium huh? i was looking at chiara yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so today she sits on the md and i mean see it's very interesting how you know how you you i think it's you've been very intuitive um while looking at the science of management um on on your career selections and the opportunities you've taken uh, but also it tells you that if you work for a good company the company is also guide you you know which is i think which is a combination which you did kasturi and if i add the dots you also have a set of friends who are supporting you so so you have social support you have your workplace support and then you have of course your ambitions of what you like to do and and if you don't manage all these three uh, you know you 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 cannot succeed which is which is what you have done so tell us so finally this i can tell you you're the <clears throat> you had a knack of always connecting the dots right i read your articles and stuff you look at any incident and you create a very interesting view and this is what you're saying is absolutely true uh i just do the little i only have to have the passion and the and the uh, commitment to learn uh the company has to actually give you the environment and the opportunities and the belief and the culture for a woman and a woman who can be outspoken to succeed um and the support around you i mean you can't do anything i mean in life even bringing up my kids if my domestics were not there would i be able to do it no i should be eternally grateful to them um so that whole social network and the fabric which supports you um is important yeah i'm great i mean i'm sure you can do an article on that yeah <laughs> so uh, tell us finally about sudu sudu and brownie oh my god these two were two dogs there if you walk anybody goes to independence square you see two dogs who look a bit similar one is fairer than the other with belts on their neck so one has a blue belt and a red belt uh they have been with us uh, working out with us uh, we used to feed them my friend and my friend jan me and my friend janaki however during lockdown we decided in april we got permission and decided we would go and feed that whole lot so it was not only sudu and brownie but we had about 10 dogs who come and if i and and you know when you, during lockdown it was only our jeep which would be at 6 o'clock or 6:45 in the morning they sit on that you know near the near the statue and they look at you and you can see them coming across the vehicle and the smiles and they eat from that time they got very close to us so now when we go walking they do the jog with us in fact yesterday night i went for a jog and i am like stopping my jog because brownie is running and they are old and they are tired and they are not eating properly so this is our relationship with sudu and brownie 
um, they are such lovely dogs. We try to home them, but they are not happy in a home. So people say, why are you doing this? Because they, they, I think he howled the whole night in the house because he wanted to go out again. So that's our relationship. And yeah, and then those are the simple things in life. So the final message from you to youngsters, Kasturi, uh, now that we have connected the dots of uh, school and your friends and um, your office, and now Sudhu, <laughs> what is your <laughs> final <laughs> message to the youngsters who are watching you? Because, uh, I mean, what you said is not in the books, you know, and, and that's the whole purpose of today's discussion that, uh, you know, yeah, you went back to books and you kept coming in and out of books. But of course, you are a bright kid because to get into university with 15, uh, just falling short of 15 marks means that you're bright. So, you know, you, you had the whole uh, construct hardwired in your head. It was just that, you know, you, 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 you did clearly have a clear vision, but then, you know, you have done so good. So what's your message? In, in final words to these 100 plus who are watching you? So what my message is, each of you have a unique skill and take it from, my, from me that companies need all the different skills. So for now, I mean, I must say now at HEMAS, I'm trying to launch a young program, get some young smart people, but I'm very particular. I want musicians in, I want liberal arts in, I want engineers in, I want, I want all the mix. Because I, I think we can benefit by getting these diverse thoughts in, in by these young people. Um, and uh, these people who are, who are passionate, who are not fearful of learning stuff. So the, while you're doing MBAs, that theory is very important. You have to take the theory and relate it to your work. Um, because you can't take it and write it. And, and one thing in life in commercial world, uh, you can't script the outcome. That outcome will never happen. You can take an Excel book, a sheet, you can do a PowerPoint and you can write what you want as an outcome. And when you turn back and go to the market, that outcome doesn't come. Uh, you have to be able to convince the retailer, convince the distributor. You'll have to be able to convince the consumer that this actually is what meeting his needs and, and it'll stick with him or her. Um, the fact that you are creating friends within that, each friend of yours uh, has a different skill. Learn to appreciate it because that's the only way you all will learn from each other and uh, draw down on each one's experience. Um, and only together you all can succeed. So I guess have be passionate enough to learn, want more, uh, think differently, be bold enough to think the dumbest things because um, that is not scripted in the education curriculum. Question everything because that's the only way you can you can actually simplify a lot of your answers because when you question, you question, you granularize it to a simple answer. And um, enjoy this. I mean, I know it's tough when you do an MBA, but enjoy it from more than an exam perspective. Take it up as a learning perspective, learning where you're going to absorb knowledge versus, versus absorb theory. And uh, try and apply it as soon as you can, because if you let it be for about a year or two, in three years, you will not remember what you studied and you wouldn't know how to connect the dots of, and remember there are, as like Kohanta very rightly listened and connected dots. When you're studying, you have to connect the dots in your real life, whether you're an entrepreneur, you're an academic, you're a corporate person, uh, you need to connect the dots on what you're learning. And most of all, actually enjoy what you're doing today because God only knows what COVID has taught us. You don't know what is there tomorrow. Enjoy and feel a sense of fulfillment in whatever you do, whatever role you do. I, I think whichever role I held, I, if I didn't feel fulfilled, I wouldn't have been doing that role. Thank you very much, Kasturi. And I like to, I, I don't know whether Bandula is in anywhere. Bandula, a good oh, okay. There are a lot of questions on this. What were you, would you want me to look at it or what? What, what are the questions that are coming? Uh, you, um, okay. What is your advice for a student who chose MBA who has a bachelor's degree in science? <laughs> I think bachelor's science alone, I think it gives you the ability, it gives you a different skill, how you break it down and think, right? It's more analytics. Um, 
MBA can be much later. I only advise I'll say is whichever the bachelor's degree, unless it's very technical, the base degree, it's, it's just opening your doors to some first opportunity. Beyond that, you can pivot in the way you want to. MBA, when you're a bit more mature and you know what you want, <clears throat> what questions you can't answer, go ahead with it. Um, I know I didn't tell you one thing when I was in my, when I went into Aramex, I started my SCCA final because reason not to qualify, but I needed to be, I had to, I had to consolidate and I had forgotten my consolidation and stuff like that and my tax part of it. So uh, there's no right or wrong. I would only say bachelors choose what you enjoy or choose what you're good at. Um, don't choose what others expect you to choose. Masters, wait for, wait for some time till you know what you're good at and know you're more self-aware about your strengths and where you kind of think you'll enjoy working. Uh, that's another one. Has self-doubt ever been a hurdle in your life? If so, what do you do? Shaheem is asking you. So Shaheem, um, I think self-doubt, there are two two things come to my, me mind one was the um, one incident is when i was given the role of managing director of transportation i kind of um, said i'll think about it because i doubted that i could move from a functional head into a business head and mind you a business head where i was supposed to manage a people who were well over older than me and in the industry i didn't know anything about and I had doubt and I told my boss, I'll come back to him. I'll think about it. And I didn't go back to him and he called me back, I think in two weeks or one month or something like that and said, what do you do? What do you think? I said, well, I didn't think about him. And, and that, but anyway, I think I won't take it. And he said, no, I've made up my, made, I've made the decision. You're going ahead with it. So that was one. Um, the second, I think I had for the longest, which I had to get coached was, Look, so when you go into a, uh, so see how Rohanta to kind of, kind of articulate it. So Rohanta has a skill of uh, connecting the dots and uh, talking and, and uh, sometimes how the male brain thinks and female brain thinks are different and how I present is different. You can clearly see, right? Um, so the board, whether we like to historically boardrooms are male dominant and how they, I had a doubt of how I could work with how would I be able to get the board to understand my thoughts um, whether I was doubting whether I could uh, kind of move I would be able to hold the command the board the way others would or a guy would so that self-doubt I actually managed to sort out and I, I brought it up with my coach and he said the answer he said is if anybody's curious is be yourself so Kasturi had a USP be yourself that's how the Harvard structure worked for me because I got some tools in how I handle it. Uh, so that was one, two incidents. So, yeah, there's one Thanks, question. Kasturi. I mean, I got 27 uh, questions on my uh, WhatsApp, uh, but I'm going to let you go. It's almost 7.40, uh, but knowing Kasturi, I know she'll always answer all, all 27 questions before she goes. I know that, I, I mean, that's her attitude and that's where she gets it. But um, I mean, it's ex excellent to have you on board. I know you're, you're really, really busy. I've been trying to get you on board for some time, but I know you were you know, caught up. So thank you very much, Kasturi. And it's really lovely to see you um, um, moving up. Uh, um, I, actually, the, the chairman is Bandula Iguduge for Apit. Uh, the former chairman of EDB. So he was actually come, he was going to come and speak, but he couldn't connect uh, Kasturi. So he gives his wishes to you. And uh, maybe I will speak to him and ask him to offer five scholarships to Hemas uh, for, for <laughs> MBA education. Yeah? Uh, you, can, you, can, you can recommend. I'll, speak, I'll, I'll, I'll do a trade. You do that and I will do, for every batch, I'll do a session. Oh, thank you. That'll be great. So, um, all the best, Kasturi. Thank you very much.